Here's how to tune a microwave antenna using the uh, sweep generator and a spectrum analyzer. We're going to be using a device called a directional coupler. This is used to sample uh, an RF signal. When the uh, RF comes in one port, it passes through with a minimal loss into our load. And uh, on the top here, there's a coupled port on this particular directional coupler. The coupling is 8 dB. The actual coupling factor isn't really going to matter, but the, the frequency range of the directional coupler will be important. And uh, there's usually uh, two ports on the top like this, uh, two coupled ports. And one of the ports has to have a 50 ohm termination. When connected to a load with our signal generator, having our RF input on one of the ports and our antenna load on the other our, uh, load port, any um, impedance mismatch between the source generator and our load is going to cause reflected power to flow back into the directional coupler. By tapping that uh, reflected power off to our other coupled port, we can kind of get an indication of the uh, how our, uh, the impedance mismatch of our antenna compared to our, our uh, reference load or our reference source, which is usually 50 ohms. This uh, power factor is, is uh, essentially the uh, return loss of our load, which uh, basically relates to the uh, standing wave ratio, which tells you, of course, uh, how well your uh, antenna is matched to your, uh, your source uh, impedance. I have a signal generator sweeping from uh, 2 to 3 gigahertz at about negative 10 dBm. That's coming in on this uh, cable right here. This will be our input. This cable right here is going to our spectrum analyzer, which I have centered at 2.4 gigahertz with 100 megahertz per division on the span. Our reference level is at negative 10 dBm and it's uh, 10 dB per division, the vertical. I'll add our termination. Put a 50 ohm load on our uh, antenna port basically. So we have a, our signal coming in this port being terminated on this port. Any reflected power is going off to our spectrum analyzer. This will be a best case scenario. As you can see, it's about uh, negative 40 dBm. Again, the actual value doesn't matter, just the uh, ratios of what we're going for. I take off the 50 ohm load. That'll be our worst case scenario. We're going to say that's about negative 20 dBm. So there's a 20 dB difference between a just an open port and a 50 ohm load. So naturally, we want to have the minimum reflected power, which is going to be we want our, when we hook up our antenna, we want it to trim the monopole and probe antenna so we get the minimum reflected power, which will be about negative 40 dBm. Here's a, I have a commercial patch antenna just to show you what, kind of get an example of what we're going to do. This uh, patch antenna is designed for the 2.4 gigahertz uh, ISM band. 
As you can see from our center 2.4, we got a nice dip in the 2.45 band right here. I can actually, um, it's 50 megahertz per division now. Centered, still centered at 2.4. You can see the nice dip at about 2.45. So this is a commercial antenna designed for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz band. Now I'll connect up one of our uh, CAN antennas here. I purposely made the uh, monopole a little too long. As you can see, Pretty bad between 2.4 and 2.5. So I got a nice cutters here. I'm gonna very, very carefully. What I'm doing is I'm gonna trim the monopole copper pipe or copper tubing that we were using very carefully, just like that, you know. I'd say we got a pretty good response. So I got a as I trim more uh, material from the probe, the monopole probe, the uh, higher the frequency is going to be, the response is going to be. So I'll trim it again just a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good actually. Remember our worst case scenario was negative 40. 20, 30, was, yeah. For our best case. I meant. So we're still at, uh, it's actually pretty good as it is right now. It's not horrible. So. You're supposed to do these tr antenna trimming like outside or something, but you hmm, usually don't got much of a choice. Yeah, it isn't too bad. So, um, the material, the copper tubing does come uh, kind of smashed, as you'll kind of notice when you trim it. I like to hit it with a emery board or a file and kind of clean it up, round it up, just to make it look nice. 